Today we're going to talk about Article 110. What do you think about that, Jimmy? Well, I think that's a good idea. Are you sure? Yeah, I really like Article 110. <laughs> I can't do that. Sorry. Article 110, the biggest thing that we need to discuss first is the scope. Remember that is the first thing you need to look at in every article that you have to use. Why? Because it helps us make sure we're aiming towards our target. So the scope for Article 110.1 is general requirements for installation, access to spaces about equipment and conductors. You know, that's a lot of information, but basically what that's telling us is it's going to let us know about our, our working space requirements and items like that. Article 110.7 talks about integrity. Well, what is integrity? That is doing what is right even though nobody's looking. So what that would involve with electrical work would be free from short circuits and ground faults. I used to work for a company that we would we would just leave that stuff. You'd finish a house, you turn on the breakers, everything that tripped you just left off. Uh, according to the code you can't do that. Well article 110.7 remember that next time you have somebody working with you uh, that wants to leave it. Article 110.10, .10, short circuit ratings. We talked a little bit about this in the first video on safety uh, when we were dealing with um, 22,000 short circuit amps. Well, if you look at your breakers, they're actually rated at 10,000 uh, amps interrupting current, which is about what your panel might be, but depending on uh, how, how much ampacity and how much power is going through there and uh, your amount of resistance, it could be higher. But generally, in a circuit, you probably, in a home, will never come across anything more than 10,000 amps for a short circuit. And that's what the breakers are rated at. And according to code, that's exactly what they must be rated at. Well, let's move on to Article 110.11. That one talks about deteriorating agents. Did I say that right? Deteriorating agents. Deteriorating agents, that sounds okay. Well, when you put the equipment in an environment, it must be rated for that environment. A friend of mine was telling me that uh, they work at a water treatment plant and they have a air conditioner that is in the uh, outdoor environment for their office space. But a water treatment plant, the air is pretty corrosive and every year they have to fix that unit because just the environment around it tears it up. Well, we have to watch out for that stuff when it comes to our equipment. So we have to have equipment rated for the environment that it's in. Another big thing in that article for us is temporary power. Uh, if you get into apartment buildings, uh, probably there's not going to be any roof or anything on them for a long time. So when you put out temporary panels, say along the hallways, you're probably not going to use uh, outdoor rated panels. You're probably using indoor rated panels, so you have to protect them for the environment if that's the case. So that is Article 110.11. Article 110.12 is an article that I believe one of you in class has already brought this up, but neat and workmanlike manner. Yeah, we have to make it look good. You know, your definition of good and my definition of good, I'm sure, are probably different. But it can't be a mess. And so an inspector could actually come into your job site and tell you that you got to change it because you don't like the way it looks. Another thing that we have to do is we have to cover the unused openings. Yeah, that means if you're dealing with metal boxes and you take a knockout out, if you don't have another box to replace it, you have to use a knockout filler. By code, Article 110.12. The other one that really gets us sometimes, and which was kind of new when I first came into the industry, was overspray or paint on the bus bars. 
I know it don't seem like that's something that would happen very often, but when you're dealing with a dwelling unit and you install the panel, most of the time you don't leave the cover on it. Well, if you don't leave the cover on it, that leaves the bus bars exposed to the environment. And if they're in there spraying lacquer and paint, uh, that overspray is going to carry throughout the house and coat your bus bars, which could in turn cause uh, some really difficult issues uh, with your breakers coming in contact with the bus bars. So that is something you have to be careful of. And now you'll find today that usually the manufacturer for residential panels will actually have a, a cutout on the cardboard for the panel that will fit that opening uh, to keep that bus bar clear. So you don't have to deal with that then. But I have seen inspectors make um, companies change out panels because of that. Uh, and they won't let you use anything to clean it off because what you clean it off with might be corrosive and also harm it. 110.13, it talks about mounting and cooling of equipment. I'm not going to deal with cooling of equipment because usually in uh, in residential areas we don't we don't have equipment that has to be cooled. Uh, that might apply to transformers or maybe larger switch gear that has uh, vented openings uh, that allow just natural convection of air to keep it cool. But what we will talk about is when you mount your equipment to the wall, you have to use anchors. I, I know you guys probably already do, but talk to some of the old timers. Uh, if they couldn't find an anchor, they would drill a hole, uh, shove some wood in it, and then mount it. And it did work. In fact, it worked really well. The only problem is after a while, because the wood is organic and it's a natural substance, uh, it will deteriorate over time. And once it does that, uh, everything that's that's connected to it is just going to fall apart. So that screw is no longer going to be holding anything and your panel or whatever that you uh, attach to the wall will will just fall over. So article 110.14 it talks about a lot of stuff that really explains how we use some of our tables. The first thing though I want to talk about is uh, wire binding screws, which would be uh, connecting to screws with our wires. And according to code, they're only going to let you use number 10 and smaller. You know, that'd be like wrapping around a, a device screw. And that's all that's going to be allowed to do in the code is number 10. And and 110.14 talks about, I mean, it's terminations. And then we deal with temperature limitations. Here's where it gets... Uh, interesting and starts to define what goes on in our tables. Uh, according to the 110.14c temperature limitations, uh, anything 100 amps or less or number 14 to number 1 wire, you have to use the 60 degree table to size your conductor, no matter what the insulation class is. Yeah, we use THHN, which is the 90 degree table, but we have to use the 60 degree table to size our conductor. Now once we get over 100 amps, we can use the 75 degree table. Well, that, that at least gives us one more table over, uh, as long as the insulation class we're using is 75 degrees above. <clears throat> and let me point out that in both of those applications, if, if you're at 100 amps or less, uh, you have to use wire that's rated for 60 degrees or more. And in a 100 amp or over 100 amp application, you have to use wire that's rated 75 degrees or more. So let's look at an example. If I had a double oven that I was putting in a house and it was 50 amps, or that was the size of the circuit that I had to run to it. So if I look at table 310.15B16, and I look in the THHN column because that's what I'm running, I'm going to find that I could use a number 8. Well... According to this code, though, I have to look at the 60 degree table, which is going to make me use a number six. All right, 125 amp sub panel. Let's use that for an example. If I'm using THHN and I am looking in the 75 degree column, I'm going to come up with my exact answer. But I'm using THHN, so what about the 90 degree column? Well, that's going to show us that we can use number two. But once I look in the 75 degree column, I realize I'm going to have to use 
number one. Well, we're going to jump a few articles here and go on to article 110.26, which is spaces about our electrical equipment. This article is all about safety. And the reason that it's about safety is because we don't want to be caught up between a panel and a wall or some other fixed object if something were to go wrong. So it gives us space requirements. One of the spaces is going to be the width. So 30 inches or however wide the equipment is, whichever is greater. Now the 30 inches don't start from the center of the panel. It can be from the left panel or the left side and then over to the right side 30 inches. It could be from the right side over to the left side 30 inches. Uh, it could be just offset of the center. It, it really doesn't matter as long as you have 30 inches in width or the width of the equipment. And then we have to deal with height. You know, they don't want you on your knees uh, working in a panel. So six and a half feet from the floor to the ceiling is what they require. Now in existing electrical installations they are going to allow an exception and we will look at that in the book uh, when we talk about this in class. Now there's a table for the depth. So our example shows us a panel, <clears throat> excuse me, on a block wall. Behind that panel is another block wall. Well, according to our table, we meet condition number two, which we have concrete or block wall behind us, which is considered uh, grounded. Well, if that's the case, then our requirement for space in front of that panel is 36 inches. And if you look at all the conditions, it's really 36 inches for everything, unless you have live conductors or live exposed electrical on both sides, then you're going to have to go to four feet. Well, that's all I have for today. I think this video is probably a little bit shorter than the other ones, but we will cover a lot of information in class that we did not cover on the video. Um, there's a lot of great areas for me to ask questions and use examples, and that's what we're going to do. So remember, take notes. I'll see you in next class and be safe.